how you've clicked on today's tropical tidbit for Saturday, August 18th here in the Atlantic. Uh, we had Helene form yesterday in the western Gulf of Mexico from the remnants of Tropical Depression 7 and ended up developing but very quickly ran into problems with Mexico land interaction. The mid-level center went inland right away. The surface center has now also snuck inland over here, though there is still some structure out over the water. You can see the convection going off here. And uh, the models have backed off a little bit on aggressiveness with this, but this is going to be creeping up the coastline here over the next couple of days and may need to be watched for reformation over the water. Here's the current 500 millibar map, the colors representing uh, the 12 hour change. Notice we have height falls going on over here over the southern United States as we have this trough coming through the Great Lakes and then another short wave getting ready to come down and amplify this over the next couple of days. And uh, here's Helene's a depression in the height field here and this is going to get drawn north by this as the ridge over the western gulf weakens and a part of this will remain inland but the part that remains over the water uh, may get pulled north or north northeastward we have this frontal boundary coming down that's going to drape over the northern gulf and uh, may bring a piece of this northeast the models have now graduated more towards a solution where a piece of this gets drawn northeastward towards Louisiana into the front and another piece remains left behind here in the western Gulf and mills around. If the energy does get split like that, development will be less likely, but a shot of tropical rain will come up along the frontal boundary into Louisiana. And uh, But if it can stay together a little bit better, uh, then the chances for development just off the Rio Grande and off of the Texas and Mexican coastlines uh, may still be possible within a couple of days. Uh, the Canadian is one of the models that still shows this within five days uh, showing some development off the coast here. So the pattern being a little bit stagnant means that this will be hanging around pretty close to the coast for several days yet and still has to be watched for potential regeneration uh, near the coastline and a shot of rain is likely to come up the front towards Louisiana. Texas may get some rain uh, depending on how much this tries to develop and sling some uh, moisture out of the southeast towards the coast, but Mexico is already getting rain, Louisiana will probably get some rain, and Texas may get in on that as well. And now, now as this starts moving inland initially, people may start to forget about this, but don't forget about her. She may come back uh, later, so we'll be keeping an eye on that. Elsewhere in the Atlantic, we have a uh, Hurricane Gordon now developing an eye out here, pretty impressive, moving almost due east and uh, may uh, skirt the Azores here on his way out to sea and will not be significantly affecting any major land areas except for the islands out there and uh, will not be a significant issue. And down here is the big story over the next week or two is going to be Invest 94L over here west southwest of the Cape Verde Islands an impressive way with good structure and an area of low pressure developing. The models are pretty bullish on developing the, developing this and it looks like it should develop eventually. Right now though it still has a lot of dry air uh, from the north that you can see is getting penetrated right there on the last frame of the loop into the northwestern part of the circulation. This will be holding it down probably for the next few days and by the time it gets a couple days away from the islands I think it will get named. It already has the latitude gains away from the intertropical convergence zone to develop on its own and as it comes westward it should eventually get better organized. Uh, but the big story with this is the fact that it may come far enough west to affect land and it could eventually be a pretty close scrape for the northern Antilles Islands here as it comes westward. A lot about the track will depend on how fast it strengthens uh, over the coming uh, few days here. But if we look at the European ensembles, six days out, 500 millibar, this is what we're looking at. You can see the storm down here uh, with the spread on the ensemble members anywhere from Puerto Rico to northeast of the Antilles Islands. But if we look at the overall pattern here, if we uh, look, we see there's a lot of blocking showing up over the North American Arctic. And when you see this, you know that there has to be some kind of a height fall and troughiness developing somewhere downstream and to the south. And if we then notice that we have this trough coming into Western Europe, I know the orientation is a little weird with the hemispheric view here, but this trough is moving eastward into Western Europe. And uh, with all this troughiness in here, it implies that the ridge is going to remain pretty strong over the Central Atlantic, which you can see that it is. And uh, that will keep this coming westward and end up threatening the Northern Antilles. And then we have a choice here. It forces the weakness back over uh, the northeastern United States uh, with this setup, and this is where the trough should be uh, near the eastern seaboard in the six to ten day time frame. 
But you notice the ridge is here, and uh, hurricanes can come around the nose of ridges. Just because the height line comes straight west here does not mean that the storm has to come all the way through the Caribbean islands before recurving like this. That's not how things work. If the center of the high is here, it's already weak on its western flank in here, which means that a strong hurricane can eat away at the edge of this ridge. So if it strengthens fast, you see some of these ensemble members to the north here are strengthening it faster. It can come around the ridge like this near Bermuda and recurve to the north, but if it's weaker and doesn't uh, strengthen as fast, it can come into the islands and become a threat uh, to the eastern United States with time as we go on. If we go out to day eight, uh, you can see that a lot of the ensembles uh, take it west-northwest and end up getting it near or northeast of the Bahamas, and you can still see the trough in western Europe and the blocking over the North American Arctic, setting up the weakness right here over southeast Canada and the eastern U.S., uh, indicating that this should recurve uh, somewhere between Bermuda and the eastern seaboard or along either of those two corridors. And uh, the models we're pretty far east with this yesterday. They've switched a lot farther west today. They were recurving it before 60 west yesterday, and I opined on Facebook that this would be too far east, and they have made a dramatic switch. The GFS especially is all the way into the northeastern Caribbean with this now, and you can see it on day 8 over Hispaniola on this morning's 12Z run, which just came out, and you see there might even be another storm behind it here. And in a pattern like this, we have uh, the potential for recurve between 65 and 80 west is where I think this is going to end up recurving. My current, my current track thinking is that this comes west, eventually gets named a couple days away from the islands, takes its time developing here, and will not be horribly strong by the time it reaches the islands, but it should start gaining some latitude when it strengthens. Could be a close call here for the northern Antilles, and uh, again, a lot will depend on exactly how fast this does strengthen over the next five days, and it is still five whole days away from the Antilles, so we have a long time to watch this, uh, but after that, eventually it's going to work its way farther to the north, and depending on how strong it is, could recurve anywhere between, I think, 65 west, which is Bermuda's lat longitude, and 80 west, which encompasses most of the U.S. eastern seaboard. Anything west of 70 west for a recurve could threaten a part of the eastern seaboard. So this is a potential land threat in the long term. A long time to watch this one, but the pattern is similar uh, to some of the patterns we saw in the 50s. A lot of the analogs showing up on the CPC website today are from the 50s where hurricanes were moving towards the eastern seaboard. Carol of 1954 is showing up. I didn't put that on today because that was a development in the Bahamas that came north, but in general with the weakness in this area it shows that the development is favored in this region. And somewhere in here we may have a hurricane or something close to that in a week or so. So we'll keep a close eye on the situation. And don't forget about Helene down here. Could try to come back in a few days as well. But this will be the big story taker over the next week to 10 days. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.